Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Once again, we are here uh, to bring a word from the Lord, thanking and blessing the Lord for another beautiful day mm -hmm. that He has blessed us, even though there's snow on the ground. It's still a beautiful day because the Bible says this is the day that the Lord has made yes. and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It is a blessing to be in the land of the living, thanking God how he has kept us safe thus far down through this pandemic and uh, we continue to pray for the saints everywhere. Uh, those that are mourning the loss of loved ones, there are many that is in the hospital, there are many that is sick on every front and we just praying and trusting God that God is going to bring us out. Uh, it's been said over and over again that we are in a place now that we have never been before. We have never been here before but we know that God is able. We know that He's a God that is able to do any and everything because there is no failure in our God and as long as we uh, can understand that and believe that by faith that there is no failure in God uh, we'll be able to maintain our faith and stay encouraged in this time and I would that the saints of God uh, reach out to someone encourage someone amen during this time of this great pandemic continue to pray for our government there's still uh, much trouble and evil in the land on both sides of the aisle so we must learn to pray but the scripture always comes to our rescue if my people yes. which are called by my name mm -hmm. the word of the Lord he said would humble themselves and pray mm -hmm. saints of God it's praying time like never before it's yes. praying time let us have a quick word. Father God, we honor you and we praise you once again for all that you are to and for us, O oh God. And Lord, we ask you right now to take this word, anoint it, Lord Jesus, and send it out to all four corners of the earth. Bless your people, O oh God. Uplift their spirits through the word. Give us an ear to hear and a heart to obey your word. And we'll be ever get careful to give you the glory and to give you all of the praise, this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Once again, we just blessed the Lord to have this opportunity uh, to come before you uh, once again. Thank and praising God for uh, First Lady, how God has continued to bless and strengthen her body. And asking you all that's under the sound of my voice to continue to pray for First Lady. Amen. Tonight we want to, <clears throat> excuse me, get into our word, uh, and we want to use for our scripture uh, lesson tonight a very familiar passage of scripture uh, that is from the book of Habakkuk, chapter number two. Habakkuk, chapter number two, and we want to read verse one and verse two in your hearing. And we hear the word of the Lord saying, I will stand upon my watch and see, and uh, set me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what he will say unto me, and what I will answer when I am approved. Uh, let me read verse number one again. I will stand upon my watch and set up on my tower, and I will watch to see what he will say unto me, and what I will answer when I am approved, reproved. And then verse number two said, And the Lord answered me and said, Watch, write the vision, make it plain upon tablets, that he may run that read it. And we thank God for uh, the reading of his word, the revealed word, the revealed word of God, the revealed word. The word says it's not a uh, hidden thing, but it is revealed, God's word. 
I want to say that there are so many uh, men and women, uh, boys and girls of all ages, if you would, that would, uh, they would like to hide behind the I don't know. Mm. Amen. There are so many, well, I don't know, I don't know. Well, I'm going to try to help you tonight if I can. Uh, but as the old folk uh, used to say all the time, uh, that dog won't hunt anymore. In other words, what he's saying is that we can't hide behind the ignorant game any longer. Right. Amen, amen. The ignorant game that give us excuse. Mm. We can't use that anymore because the truth of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ has been revealed to us. Mm -hmm. Amen. The word of God has been revealed and... It is being preached all over the world. Yes. Amen. The God still have a few that stand in firm mm -hmm. on the Word of God. That's not compromising. That's not watering down the Word of God. Amen. God still have a few that stand for true holiness. Amen. And without fear will stand and preach yes. the unadulterated Word. Yeah. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So as we take note of the text, God is speaking and giving his instructions unto the prophet Habakkuk. Amen. He's giving his uh, instruction. Amen. He tells him to write the vision. Amen. This is the instruction that God is giving to the prophet. He said, write the vision and make it plain. Amen. That is the thing that I'm constantly in the face of God myself asking God, God give me better understanding. Yes. Fix my dialogue, oh God, that I can deliver a word, a uncompromised word, a word that is easy to understand mm -hmm. unto your people. Yes. But this is what God said to the prophet, make it plain. Amen. Why is he saying that? Because it's for the benefit of others. Yes. Yes. Amen. I want to say that again. Uh, write it, make it plain for the benefit uh, of others. Listen, when God give you a revelation in his word, and I'm saying this to especially to all preachers and teachers, uh, when God give you a revelation, in his word is not always just for you mm. all right sure there are times when God have a message just for you but many other times when God give us a revelation it's not just for you that is why so many times you hear the preacher say I have a word from the Lord for you mm. amen what is he saying that God has given him something, amen, to share with the people. We're talking about a revealed word, amen. So he said, I have something to tell you from the Lord, amen. God has already revealed it unto him, the preacher, amen, or to her, whatever the case may be. So now his duty or her duty is to reveal what God told him, amen, but we have to make it plain. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah, amen. It, it, it saddens one's heart to see individuals in the times that we're in now seem to want to mm -hmm. glamorize or fix the word of God so that people will rejoice. I like to see people shout, I promise you I do, amen. I like to see the saints rejoicing but I want to see them saved. Amen. Once you are really saved and Holy Ghost filled, you're going to shout every now and then. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. But we have to make it plain. Because, amen, the, the preacher, amen, before he can preach to you, uh, he must first see it himself. Amen. God has to first show it to the preacher to him or her, amen, so they can uh, make known to others 
what a man you don't know. You can't preach to others. Maybe I should say it like this. You cannot give someone something that you don't have. Mm -hmm. Amen. You have to first know for yourself. But when you have been in touch with God, yes. I want you to hear that. I said when you have been in touch uh, with God, you can't help but to tell somebody else. I know I'm right about that. You can't help but to tell somebody else. Amen. There's no way you can really have the Pentecost experience, mm -hmm. hallelujah, amen, and not tell others about it. Yes. No way you can have it, amen. I'm reminded of uh, Jeremiah, amen. Jeremiah chapter number 20. Jeremiah 20. I want you to turn there to Jeremiah chapter number 20, amen. It says like this. Then I said, I will not mention, get this now, I will not mention, uh, I will not make mention of his name. I will not make mention of the name, nor speak any more, amen, in his name. But the word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bone. Let me read that again. I want to read it verbatim. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word, get this now, his word was in my heart as a burning fire. Shut up in my bones. Hallelujah. Amen. I said before, when you have had the Pentecost experience, there is no way you cannot tell somebody else. Mm -hmm. Now, what I want us to do now, I want us to turn to the book of Acts. We're going to do some reading. Turn to the book of Acts, chapter number 4. Acts, chapter number 4. Let's go to Acts 4. And we want to look at verse, we're going to do quite a bit of reading. We're going to look at verses 1 down through verse number 22. Amen. Get some Bible reading in tonight. Acts chapter 4. I want you to make note of that so that you can go back and, and do some research and do some studying. That is Acts chapter number 4. Verse 1 to verse number 22. All right? You should be there. It says, And as they spake unto the people, the priests and the captains of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people, get this now, they taught the people and preached Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands upon them, get that, they laid hands upon them and put them in hold until the next day, for it was now evening tide. Howbeit, many of them which heard the word See, that's why they want to shut the word up. That's why we have to make it plain. It said, them that heard the word believed, and the number of them was about 5,000. Amen. The word works. Yes, it does. Verse number 5. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes, and as the high priests, Caiaphas and John, Alexander, and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest, was gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked by what power or what name have you done this? Mm -hmm. All right. Verse number eight. Peter. Oh, I like this. Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, You rulers of the people and elders of Israel, 
if we this day be examined, examined of the good deeds done in the impotent man, by what means we, he is made whole, but know unto you, be it known unto you, all and all, be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus, here it is, by the name of Jesus of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him, that this man stand here before you whole. Follow me if you will. This is the stone which, the, which was set at naught, of the builders, which has become the head of the corner. Yes. Here it is again. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name. You got to make it plain. See, when we preach the word of God, we can't just say anything. Mm. We have to preach the word. There is none other name given among men whereby we must be saved. All right? Now we go down to verse number 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. See, when you've been with Jesus, there's something about you that's different. All right? Yes. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. <laughs> That's one thing. When God worked, there's, there's no controversy. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves. So they held a little quick meeting mm -hmm. against them. What can we do with these people? saying, What shall we do to these men? For they indeed a notable miracle has been done by them and manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But that it spread no further among the people, let us strictly threaten them that they speak henceforth no more in the name. Mm. But what did uh, the writer say a moment ago? It was like, what? Fire! Mm -hmm. Shut up in my bones. They called them and commanded them not to speak at all, not teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than God, judge you. You do the judging. goes further to say, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. We're talking about the revealed word of God. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing, how they might punish them. Because of the people all, for all the men glorified God for that which was done. For the man was above 40 years old on whom the miracle of healing was shown. Write the vision. Make it plain. We're talking about the revealed Word of God, the revealed Word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So, amen, when we uh, give, when God give a voice, give you a voice, you must speak. When God give you a word and a voice, you must speak and make plain to the people what the Lord is saying. The revealed word. We must reveal to the people what God is saying. Mm -hmm. But you must understand 
The gospel of Christ is not hidden. No way. All the excuses have been taken out of the way. No. It's in the plain sight. It's, in, it's not hidden. It's out there in plain sight. Even uh, if there was no preacher, if there was no preach word, if you open your mind's eye, nature itself will preach to you. Mm -hmm. Yes, it will. Nature itself will preach to you and let you know that there is a higher power. And his name is Jesus. When the time that we're living in now is a time, it's urgent to spread the word. There was too many people leaving then and now. There are too many people leaving life as we know life without God in their lives. I'm going to say that again. There's too many people dying. I'm making it as plain as possible that do not know the Lord as their personal Savior. Yes, sir. And there is no excuse because the Word has been revealed to us. Amen. They're leaving. So we must preach the Word with conviction. God will hold us responsible for lost souls person get lost, end up in a devil's hell, but the blood will be on our hand. That is why we must make known the revealed word, and it takes both the Old and the New Testament to get a clear vision of the word of God. It takes both. This is what Augustine said. He said it like this about the Bible. And my bishop, Val Johnson, used to say the same thing often, many times in Bible classes and in conversations that we would have. He would often say this. He would say, in the Old Testament, the New Testament is concealed. He said that often. He said, son, the New Testament is concealed in the Old Testament. Then he would say, in the New Testament, the Old Testament is revealed. So it takes both working together. Yes. Every day we're going from revelation to manifestation. God reveals something, then when the time is right, it is manifest. Yes. So we're going from revelation to manifestation. The Word of God is being revealed more and more every day. And I know my time is almost gone, but if we look in Genesis 1 right quick, Genesis chapter number 1 and verse 1, it says it like this. It says, In the beginning, God, and I always like to put a stop sign right there. In the beginning, God. It says, created the heavens and the earth. That's revealed knowledge. God created the heaven and the earth. All right, question. Who did it? God did it. God. All right. Now let's not disturb that, but let us run over now to the New Testament. Let us look at 1 John, St. John 1, I'm sorry, not 1 John, St. John, chapter number 1, and verse 1. It says it like this, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now Genesis 1 and 1 said, In the beginning God created heaven and the earth. Here it says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. So when we look at uh, Genesis, revealed knowledge, John, that's manifested knowledge. Alright? So, now if we note, in the Bible, I'm going to show you here how 
the old and the new goes together. They complement one another. There's no controversy. They complement one another. They complement one another. All right, look at Isaiah 9 and verse number 6. Note this text. It says, For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. And get this now, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. That sounds like God, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Now we call that revealed knowledge. That's revealed knowledge. Look at those verses again. 9 and 6. For unto us a son is born, unto us, a, a, sorry, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Let us know, this led us to know that what to expect. Let us know what to expect of what is coming. Now let us look at Luke chapter number 1. We're going to look at verses 26 through 38, but we're not going to read all of that. I'll let you put that in your notes and you can read it later. But I want you to get the essence of what the scripture is saying. All right, Luke 1, verse 26 to 38, he's talking about the angel Gabriel. That's what the Bible teaches us. The angel Gabriel came to Mary with news that she would have a son. That is the manifestation of the revelation that was given in 9 and 6. This is a deeper revelation, I say again, of Isaiah 9 and verse number 6. Mm -hmm. Then to know that these things was going to take place. So there we see in Luke 8 through 16 a manifestation of the foregone conclusion. So we have to take the word of God in the order in which God give it and make a parallel to get a better understanding of what God is saying concerning our salvation and the reason for Jesus coming on the scene. This is the revealed Word of God. And before I close, I want to say again that there's no excuse for anyone to be lost because God's Word has been made very plain to us what salvation is all about. So it gives us manifestation of the foregone conclusions as stated. This let us know that the Word of God is not hid. No, it's not. But it's open. It's open. It's open wide. And in plain sight, it's not hid. When we look at Matthews 1 and 21, it explains the reason Jesus came. It explains the reason. Note the text. It says it like this, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sin. The revealed word of God. The revealed word. I'm going to close right there with this lesson tonight. And we'll pick it up again next week with part two. But I want you to understand, saints of God, that this word is not hid. It's a revealed word. It's open. It's open for all. We want to pick up next week with 
2 uh, Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6 is where we'll start next week. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 through verse number 6. But we're talking about the revealed Word of God. The revealed Word. The Bible lets us know that as we read the Word of God, the Old and the New Testament, here a little, there a little, mm. line upon line, line upon line, precept on precept, precept on precept. Yes. This is how we get a better picture of what God is telling us in His Word. I pray that something has been said tonight that will help you and we'll pick up right there next week, God willing, and move forward with part two of this lesson, the revealed Word of God. Once again, Habakkuk 2, 1 and 2, I will stand upon my watch and set upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, make it plain upon tablets, that he may run that read it. The revealed word of God. Saints of God, stay prayerful. Continue to pray one for the other. That God will heal the land. God will heal the land. One of my favorite, other favorite scriptures is, is of the Lord's mercy that we're not consumed because his compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And saints of God continue to be prayerful. And if it's the Lord's will, on the 7th of next month, February, we'll be going back into the church. We'll be back in service in our building on the 7th, Lord willing. And we'll do the same as we did before. We'll have an hour of power from 10 to 11. Hope to see you then. Until then, God bless you. And may God ever keep you. And those of you that support in this ministry, as always, please continue to do so. Please continue to support the ministry. There's information on the screen how you can pay your tithes and your offerings. And if anybody wants to be saved, and I pray someone does, call the number on the bottom of the screen and someone will get back to you. There are many things we want to do. God's willing, we're going to get some things going as soon as we get back into our church. We say, God bless you. May God ever smile upon you. In the name of Jesus. Father God, once again, we come to honor you and praise you. Thanking you for all of your goodness and your mercies, for your tender care. Now, God, we put all things in your hands. In Jesus' name, amen.